This lens turns your life into a cinematic movie. So I saw the videos by Volandis and Victor Laporteza and I got immediately inspired and wanted to take that concept and apply it to Tokyo, but cyberpunk it. But one thing I noticed that hasn't yet been shared yet is an easy monitoring solution for de-squeezing anamorphic lenses as we shoot. So we're going to be going over this setup here along with everything else we use to make this short film happen. And also a huge shout out to Zune for supporting this fun little project. They got some new gimbals that are coming out along with this insane portable pocket 100 watt light which we use to film this short movie. And we couldn't have done it without our friends Kenneth and Rena. They're Tokyo based creators with a huge passion in filmmaking and they've literally searched up and down the city for the best spots that resemble the cyberpunk look. So when you think of cyberpunk, I mean, you think skyscrapers, you think big neon lights, big ads, you think flashing lights, you think almost like things are screaming at you to try to get your attention. This right behind us is actually a really great example of what to look for. Something about vending machines just always have, has a cyberpunk feel to it. The very nature of the way they're displayed, the way the drinks are displayed, and they've got lights flashing everywhere, they've got colors everywhere. All of that just feels very cyberpunk. But in particular, what we always kind of keep an eye out for it when we're shooting an alleyway shot here is um, at least some form of ambient light. In particular, the one that we picked, uh, there was like this red blinking overhead light that just cast this really ominous glow over everything inside. And then on top of that, at the end of the alleyway, we had just very bright lights out there that kind of just cast in and just filled in those shadows a little bit more. And the low light sensor of the ZV-E1 definitely helped us out a lot in these dark areas. We shot an S-Log3, taking advantage of the dual native ISOs 640 and 12800. The main lenses we got are the Saturn 35mm and the Venus 100mm T2.9. And boy, what a difference, right? Not just in focal length, but the size. Now the Saturn 35mm here is a gem. It's incredibly small small and lightweight, partially thanks to its carbon fiber design. Now, anamorphic lenses give you a much wider view than what the sensor in our cameras would normally allow, so the output of this lens is equivalent to a horizontal field of view of a 22mm spherical lens. And because of that de-squeeze, your bokeh ends up having that trademark oval shaped look. But of course, we cannot fail to acknowledge the most important characteristic of an anamorphic lens. The lens flare. The blue streaks. A bubble in neutral too, but come on, you gotta go with the blue. My friend Kenneth and I, during one night of our test shoot, literally just pointed at every single light source and just went like, ooh, 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 get that taxi right there. Oh, oh, point at that lamppost. Do you see the flare? Do you see the flare? You know how in those like action movies where the SWAT team just come busting down the door and they're scanning the dark room with their flashlight? That's exactly how it felt. Of course, one caveat to using anamorphic lenses on these cameras is this is what it looks like on your LCD screen. Now, of course, we could invest in an Atomos monitor or a similar 5 to 7 inch monitor to help preview the footage, but that does add a significant bulk to the setup. So the next best solution is using an iPhone. Last year, Axoon released their CMO device that turns iPhones into a low latency pro monitor, and it has the option for you to input a custom de-squeeze number punch in 1.6 and voila, instant previewing. And I highly recommend getting the slim MPF battery that charges via USB-C. Although the app has a lot of pro monitoring features, we wound up still using the zebras and focus speaking on the camera to monitor exposure and focus. It's just not that clear on the app for some reason, even if we double tap to zoom. But regardless, this is probably the most compact lightweight setup for fast anamorphic previewing. And I rigged it in a way where we can go handheld to gimbal really quickly with some of these Falcom quick release accessories. I will link everything down below, but the new Zuyun Weibo 3S has an updated handle and wrist rest system, and that surprisingly came in clutch. The handle here has a quarter inch 20 screw hole where I dropped a double sided screw so that I can attach the phone monitor here. Literally a dual handle rig. And the wrist rest. <laughs> They brought it back. It looks a bit wonky. It doesn't seem like it should work, and yet it does. But it helps. It helps. As silly as it looks, it helps. I know this entire setup here doesn't look that heavy, but after six hours straight of just filming, even a bottle of water is going to feel heavy. But the Weeble 3S handled it fine. Check this orbiting shot out. My god. It's beautiful. Mm, just look at all those oval-shaped bokeh balls. Just... Mm, 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 
We were definitely pushing the limits with this lens, but the new stabilization algorithm on the Weibo 3S helped smooth things out a lot. But the accessory that I'm most excited about to use in this short film is the Molus X100, and this thing is also no joke. Zuyun has been killing it in the portable light scene. This little guy right here is capable of outputting 100 watt. 100 watt on battery. It is an absolute overkill for a night shoot like this because even at 1%, just 1% is still pretty damn bright to the point where we have the double stack of the diffusion. But it really helps. It really helps add separation between me and some of these night scenes right here. Just check out the difference. And it's by color so we can easily match the ambient lighting. This is literally a dream come true for Gorilla Run and Gun filmmakers. It's so powerful yet so light, no pun intended. We just slap it on a stick and point at me and we're just like, go, 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 go. Got the shot and left. And I'll talk more about this light in the future because I've been using it for the last several months for my YouTube A row and B row, and it's been by far my favorite travel lights for mobile studio setup. But anyways, here it is. Here is the final film. Enjoy it.